Hey there, folks. So I've got something pretty unique today, at least um, compared to the stuff I normally cover. I've got this totally not HDMI thing from Electron Shepherd. It's actually called the Electron AVE. Wow, what do you know? Definitely not violating a copyright there. Um, this was originally released under the name AV HDMI, but the HDMI Corp caught word of that, and um, well, they had they had words for Electron Shepherd, who have since rebranded this to the Electron AVE. Uh, but more or less, it is an HDMI mod for the Wii uh, by Electron Shepherd. Here, um, install looks somewhat involved. Doesn't look it doesn't look too bad, but we're gonna go ahead and get it popped into this Wii here, hopefully. Um, I totally forgot to start my screen cap too, so let's start that right now. And, um, well, as you can see, my Wii is working totally fine. I'm getting my butt kicked in a game that I've never played before and have no idea how to play. But, it works. That's all that matters, right? Pull my disc out, save it for later. Um, the only actual Wii slash GameCube game that I own. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll start getting this thing torn down here. Uh, this is a US model Wii. Um, I don't think it makes a difference. I, I, I think they're all compatible. Um, everything except for the Wii Mini at least. Um, I don't know what specific model this Wii is, we'll find out soon enough, but it doesn't matter uh, because all of the ones with GameCube controller ports are fully compatible, um, which this one has. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get started there. Uh, oh, I suppose before I tear this down, let's uh, take a quick peek at what all comes with the kit. All right, so we get three PCBs here. One of them is a flex PCB. This one has the two sets of vias for soldering on to the Wii itself. Um, on this board is a big FPGA, a few passives, and not much else. Um, once you've got this thing wired up, you plug it in with the cable that's provided. Uh, plugged into this bad boy. This is a rigid PCB that gets soldered onto the near the rear of the board. Uh, this provides the um, actual interface for the thing. Oh, that's convenient. I almost didn't have a uh, HDMI on hand for this. This is a mini HDMI, not a full size, um, but also not a micro. So I prefer full size, but Mini is the best compromise, I think. It does not come with an adapter or a cable. You'll need one, um, but you just buy like a mini HDMI cable. Those things are pretty cheap. Uh, and then there is an IR receiver that gets soldered on. I'm fairly certain this component is optional. Um, I will be installing it, however. Um, as long as you've got a GameCube controller port equipped Wii, I'm pretty sure you can manage everything through the OSD via the GameCube controller inputs, um, but if you don't have GameCube controllers, that's what this is for, so you can still manage the OSD. Uh, but, like I said, we'll install it anyway, doesn't matter. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and start tearing this bad boy down. Um, like I always say, it's a fantastic idea to make sure you're starting with a working console. That way, if by the end of the, uh, the job, it's not working, you can uh, rule out something that maybe you did. Um, if we pull out the battery board retainer here, I don't know if that's still a good battery, it might be a little bit old at this point, I'll check that later. Um, pretty sure you can peek in the board and probably can't see squat on camera. Uh, but you can get the, let me move my light, maybe that's a little bit better. No? 
well, whatever. You can take, you'll have to take my word for it. Um, you can get what board revision is in your console without having to tear the thing apart, but it doesn't matter because whatever board revision in here is compatible, so I'm just gonna tear it apart anyway. Pull these little feet off. I gotta be careful because this isn't my Wii. Oh, I suppose I didn't need to pull that feet off. You can tell I am not very familiar with the hardware. Okay, we don't need that one either. So I'll just reinstall that. Just pretend I didn't remove those. Don't worry about it. I guess we need to remove these three though. I heard where that went. Let me go grab that. <laughs> I found it, don't worry. Uh, I feel like there's more than just these screws, but I don't remember if there's any more. Oh, there's definitely two more here. Plus the ones under the door. I have taken one of these things apart before. It's just been decade. And I hang out with enough people that play with these things. Maybe something's rubbed off. Don't remember if the doors have to come out, but... They are coming out just to make my life easier. And I think we're good to go to start tearing it down. I'm really certain the faceplate comes off first. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my workbench is clearly um, laid out for Game Boys and Game Boy size things. So we things put my hands a little bit close to the camera. I'm, I apologize on that. That's not that's not getting fixed anytime soon. Because Nintendo was super cool and used like one, two, three, four, five, uh, five, or is that six? Can't see. Either way, since they use so many different screws, it probably makes sense to like lay these out on a piece of cardboard or something relative to where they came out of the console. Um. I'm gonna trust my memory for this, however, and failing that, I am not the first person to take one of these things apart, so I think I will be fine. I forgot to remove the SD card. It does not appear to be an issue. Uh, let me make a pile. Let me throw this stuff over here. Uh, I guess we can leave the SD card installed. Doesn't seem to be getting in the way of anything. Oh, the top comes off now. Ah, I got lucky. 
<laughs> More screws underneath another fascia. Fascia. Bezel. Cover. Thing. Now the top should come off. Maybe. Do I need to remove these? Let's find out. All of this could have been avoided had he just spent the few minutes to look up how these things come apart. But no. He just had to go for it because he thinks he knows better. Yeah, that one did need to come out. This happens every single time I'm doing something that's not a Game Boy. At least the first time, anyway. These ones need to come out. Yeah, probably. Oh well, as I do more and more miscellaneous electronics, I start getting better and better at it. So I think we'll be good. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, those sons of bitches. Putting the screw in so deep. Of course, it's one of them uh, trap points, too, so need a dedicated screwdriver for that, which conveniently I happen to have, but uh, uh, still not coming. Is it just, ah, just toy. Excellent. Now's as good a time as any to clean it, but Surprisingly, just a little bit of dust, that's it. We'll do that later, though. Does this thing come out? Is it just those four screws? These are the shock mounts, so I'm assuming it's just these four. Yeah, buddy. Of course, they're so tight. Save that for later. Normally, we wouldn't be reusing this part, but... Um this wee's going back together in its stock form when we're done here. Gosh, and there's another 8 million screws, of course. I think they all need to come out, too.
that's a long one, of course it is. That one probably is too. Yep. Okay, I'll leave that there. Not the most important thing, but don't forget to reinstall your shieldings when we're done. I think that's it. <sighs> Come on. Silly fan. Uh, that's screwed down to the heat. Oh, that's the memory card thing. So yeah, these probably come out too. At least all these black screws are the same. I'll go into black plastic. Shank, I hope something uh, compels you to watch this video so that you can sit here and cringe and wince as I um, struggle to do this. Alright. This popped out. I think this goes here. No, nope. that's not where that goes. Ah, uh, shoot, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Okay. a screw in this area. Duh. Maybe in that big screw hole. How about that? off next. I thought the whole board came out and then the shielding came off. 
Though admittedly, I have not torn a wee down this much ever. Oh, here we go, yeah. I didn't intend to have to be so extra with this design. <clears throat> All right. Oh my God, that was a heat sink. I fucked up the thermal pad. It's a weird place for a thermal pad to be. I'll have to replace that. All right, I think we're finally there, and I think everything I need to access is, of course, on the other side of the board. Let this come off. There we go. Just set this elsewhere. Uh... favorite thing about this iFixit kit is when shit like this happens. And I gotta go find that one screwdriver that I bought years ago for this specific purpose. And I already had it set aside. Of course. They even engraved little cutouts. How cute. All right, now this should come out. And now we want access to this side because the chip we are installing goes in this general area. Uh, now that you can see the full board without having to look through the cracks. You can see there's a little 40 on the shell um, and the corner here by the battery. And that corresponds with the board revision here, which is a RVL CPU 4.0, which means my mod here is using this inner set of vias, not the outer set. So I need to find the RVL chip, which is right here, close to the AV out board. And then I believe I need to solder to these vias right here. Huh? Mm, is that right? It looks right. Gotta be. There's no other set that looks. Remotely appropriate. Yeah, okay. So the next part, uh, try and do under the microscope, because this is small. And uh, maybe microscope will work out better for me. I wish this was flat. But of 
of course it isn't. And get this in focus here. Uh, oh, I should probably record, huh? How about that? It's in video mode. Excellent. So here is the RVL chip. I'm going to be soldering to this set of vias right underneath it. compared to the vias. I'm going to be using my uh, little fiberglass scratch pen to prepare these vias. Uh, I would prefer to only prepare the ones that need getting soldered to, but I don't think that's going to work. I also wish I could make that picture a little bit bigger. Oh, no. I can't do it. I can't do it with just the mouse. Oh no. Open image in new tab, does that work? Yeah, it does. Oh, and it's nice and big, excellent. So this is a grid of approximately six by four, um, more or less, we need three of these over on the right, these top two. Scratchy scratch. And this bottom one here. It's looking rough. Okay. Let's come at that at a different angle. There we go. You just have to be exposed to take solder. We can completely skip that next row. Uh, and then the row after that, we just need a top via and then this one right here. I figure only uncovering the ones we need will make this easier, but of course the precision of my tool and my dexterity are not in agreement. <laughs> okay, then I need all of these. I actually wonder if doing this with a, an X-Acto knife, uh, just just the tip, just so you're barely getting only the vias, might be a little bit better. So I'm exposing quite a lot here. I don't necessarily want to expose. No! My microscope! It has died. 
Let me uh, plug it in there. That's unfortunate. All this battery powered nonsense. Hey. Start recording again. Uh, oh, and I still need to clean up that last one. I'm gonna use my tweezers here. You know what, that's not gonna be any cleaner. Start out by tinning these bad boys up. Uh, did I skip one? I did skip one. This top one here. I just don't think has V exposed yet. What was that? Oh, my only GameCube game. Rest in peace. Exposed the wrong via. That's okay. And look at that. my desk lights. Save some hair. Oh boy. Clean that up. And I'm just gonna double check, make sure that I got all the views exposed that I need exposed. And it does appear so. Uh, all the views and then some. Except for maybe this top one. I gotta double check this one. Just load up the tip with a big old ball of solder. That's exposed, I guess. Not getting sold or sticking like I want though. Oh, there it goes. All right, if all went well, and I'm not saying it did because I've already lost the part. Oh, there it is. All went well. We can get this installed. And I'm going to take some tape. Let this thing don't go anywhere. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of double sided tape and stick it on the bottom of this thing here. Um, because once this is installed, I, it's not going anywhere anyway. Uh, it's nice and flat over here. So let's do that. I think that'll make my life easier. The only issue is going to be if I totally, totally bot, 
bungle, bodge, I don't know, um, mess up the alignment. But that's why we go slow. Oh, that's not where my tape goes. All right, I'm gonna stick this right underneath the FPGA here. And then peel that up. And I suppose I no longer need that tape. Make sure it's noise and focused. Get that aligned as best we can. I'm sticking down the FPGA and hopefully that's it. when I have this much junk on my desk. I'm trying to like reach around the microscope and get my lights. Smear a little bit of spread on there. And here goes nothing. in focus. Okay, it is not installed. There's maybe three vias stuck down. Uh, but uh, I'm having a hard time getting this to stay in focus. But I think it's close enough that I can continue working it from here. spin this thing around maybe that'll make my life easier oh except it doesn't fit under the microscope that way oh not this way oh that's just the worst okay how about I spin the whole microscope how about that that doesn't really help because now I can't see the microscope oh wait I can just turn it ha Don't worry guys, we'll get there. I promise. I need fresh solder and more spread though. It's probably fine but I'd much rather it just work the first try and not have to pull it apart, you know? I'm thinking also maybe, maybe, the K-tip is not the best for this. I always forget to switch tips before doing surface mount board work. And then I decide to Stubbornly try and power my way through it every single time. It's pretty great. But 
that being said, I think we're going to be okay. Aside from the capacitor that I just lifted. I'll resolder that in just a moment. we're good. How's it look? Looks like we're missing a capacitor. the other way. There you guys, bear with me. We're almost, we're almost there. I need to I need to pull this out for just a moment so I can spin it around and you'll just have to bear with me I'm sorry I'm not doing it in a visible manner but I just had to hit the other side of that capacitor make sure it is returned home and then I'll touch up the first side again Ease it. Look at that. I don't think that other side's soldered. <laughs> Let's try that again. Can I get that? No. I think we're good now. Let's check it out. Certainly looks good. Try touching up this side again, see if the whole thing wants to move. Nope, we're good. Excellent. We are not done soldering, not in the least, but we're at a good uh, breaking point. Take some time to clean this up and uh, inspect the work so far. about that? Looks great. Let me straighten this out and refocus so you can see the whole thing at the same time, huh? Uh, two of those vias look pretty light on solder. Uh, that's too much glare. We've got that top left one Oh, it looks like a diagonal one right next to it, too. Mm. I'm thinking maybe I should try touching those. You know, 
again, I'd, I'd rather not have to come back to this thing. Uh, so let's do... Oh, that's not gonna work, is it? I was gonna use just a different soldering iron entirely, but I don't have the tips handy, so we're just gonna hot swap my other one. Because I'm sure this is totally, totally good for the um, heating element and, and tips to be handling these things. And they're all hopped up. I don't know where to put this tip. It's so hot. Um, well, hopefully it doesn't bake through my silicone mat. More importantly, hopefully I don't accidentally touch it. All right. Good old J-tip. prefer the K-tip for just about everything, but sometimes the J-tip is the way to go. Almost like different tips are good for different things, huh? Alright. Get a little bit more schmoo on here. Tip tend. I haven't used this one in a while. All right. Wow, that is so much easier to get exactly where I want it. Wow, that was so much easier. Almost like I should have done that from the beginning. Uh-oh, where'd that cap come from? I think I just messed up the exact same cap again. All right, well, might as well redo all of these while I'm in here. Now I can hit them one at a time and double check. Fuck up that cap again. Yep, same cap. That is a really unfortunately placed cap. the easy way. And with the J-tip it might actually be easy. Alright, it's not going. I don't have the right angle. That's fine. All right, now we're done. I am confident in that. Just need to clean up again. Ooh, 
this is going to be a long video. There we go. All the capacitors are still where they need to be. All of the vias are connected. There's probably not any shorts. It looks good. Yeah, I think it looks good. I think I'm gonna put my scratch pen away. And I think we're done with the microscope. I think I can do everything else And I don't mean actual difficult, I just mean by hand. Okay. It's not hot enough to fuck up anything. All right, so now I still need to connect up three volt ground, probably those two, five volt, and then whatever GCD is. So let me pull my guide back up. Oh, I wish that was bigger. Let me make it bigger. I need to make it bigger. I'm sorry. Oh, I had to unplug things for um, so that I can use my uh, capture card. And one of those things was the USB hub that all of my input devices connects to. So I don't have, I have a single mouse plugged in. Here we go. Oh, that's so much better. And I had the zoom nice and turned up so that I can see it. And then in my attempts to make it even bigger, I accidentally reset the zoom. And I don't know a, uh, mouse shortcut to just control it via the mouse. Okay. Now we need some wire. Uh, I don't want to use the stuff I normally use. Uh, it seems a little overkill, uh, or actually not even overkill, um, just not appropriate. So I'm going to use 24 gauge wire. I don't know how much power this thing uses, but I don't want to use a 34 gauge wire and find out that I made a bad call. So, we'll do it this way. And I'll just keep soldering with the J tip because I'm still doing surface mount solder. I don't know if those need to be soldered, but I'll tin them. Just in case. Ooh. All right. So this first one will do five volts. I thought it was, it's over here. Five volt right there. goes not very far at all.
one down. I'll just shut up now before I dig an even deeper hole. Uh, 3.3 .3 volts right about here. ground right there. I don't know if I need that, but I don't want to block it. There's probably a much easier ground for this. Three point three volt done. All right, five volt, and then we'll use the ground that is right here. Just move my wire out of the way. Makes more sense to just spin the board to a more convenient angle. Um, I'm not doing that because I'm damn near ambidextrous. And so I just swap hands, but <laughs> I have come to realize that that is not common, so you do you. If you need to spin the board, by all means, spin the board. I covered up pads I'm going to need access to, didn't I? GCD. Okay, so this is for the GameCube controller input. Now that we've got power out of the way, I need to do the GCD. And so we can either use player one, two, three, or four. I think that's how that goes. Yeah. We'll do player one. This one we definitely don't need 24 gauge wire for, but I've already got the wire out. And then I believe we can just solder straight to TP27. Yeah, we can. Let's test pad right here. I am a little nervous soldering such a thick gauge wire to that. I think we'll be. 
be all right. And I think I'm gonna route it this way. And then hopefully that'll be totally out of the way of all the screw posts and the, and the like. It's probably a good idea to tape these wires down. I don't know if this is where they need to go, so this is what I'm doing for now. Lapping in the breeze at the very least. And now we need the IR sensor, which I believe goes back here. Gets soldered to the pins on the Wii's audio and video connector, which is that, so yes. And it goes right in the middle. Red for that. And I should have started by tinning these. K-tip. I'm so much better at this with the K-tip. It's just the surface mount stuff that it sucks at. Ugh. All of my flux is now on my mat, so that's cool. Center that again. More heat will help make up the difference. There we go, beautiful. That's all I needed was to uh, get good. And then I believe we also need to sort, short. Yes, yes, okay. So we're gonna short these two pins together, the 3.3 volt and then the pin right next to it on the connector itself. 
This is an optional feature. Uh, I am doing this because if I do this, it allows 480p output through the AV connector. Um, it should also allow, according to Electron Shepard's instructions, um, well, that, that's it. It just allows 480p. <laughs> if you don't short it, then you get 480i, but you also get compatibility with the um, digital adapt like the plug-in HDMI stuff. So with that shorted, the plug-in HDMI stuff, I don't think will work. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind, I guess, if that's relevant to you. I'm thinking with the HDMI port installed, it shouldn't make a difference. You know, why, why would you want external HDMI when you have internal, so. I think it should be good. And then I need to solder the two wires and yeah, I'm not using, I'm not using the 24 gauge, it's, it's too thick. It's too big, shunwieldy. Solder pad here, solder pad here. Yeah, one wire. And the other wire. And by other wire, I just mean the other end of the exact same wire. Oh man, that's a lot of cut off though. Oh well. Top one connects to the left one. Okay. Don't mind me, I'm just tinning my wires. Probably makes sense to install these first, so you don't have to work around all of your other work, maybe? Didn't quite think about that until too late. Not the end of the world. Oh, I accidentally poked one of my wires though. Now there's a scar on the sheathing. Alright, dope. I think we're good. Uh, oh, duh. The actual HDMI part still needs to get installed. This goes here. Uh, so I'm fairly certain this gets attached to the USB board, uh, USB plug, just for structural purposes, not for any electrical connection. Uh, but we need to tin these, and I need a lot of solder for that.
So I'm doing this as overkill as possible because um, this is unleaded solder and I'm using leaded solder. And when you mix the two chemistries, you don't get good solder joints. So I'm just adding a whole bunch of solder to dilute. And then I'm gonna come in and remove it all and then add more solder. trying to remove the port, just want to remove all the delicious leaded solder, or unleaded, I guess. Too much solder. Clean this up because there's a lot of flux. I don't want it to cause problems down the road. I don't think it will, but since this isn't exactly my Wii, I mean this in the nicest way possible. I never want to see it again. Which means if I give it any reason to come back to me, there we go. Oh no. I flexed myself. Hmm. I didn't get the board flat and I don't like that. I don't know how to fix this without a uh, Hot air. Yeah, it's a good thing this is just structural. Because I don't like how it's coming out. And this rework is a good way to scratch the shit out of the board. It is still very stuck down, though. Okay, I think that just lives there now. We 
redo the solder joints, get them nice and juicy then. Yeah, I'm sure that's how that's meant to go. Heaps of solder, nice, big, juicy fillets. And now I think we're done, so let me drop the temperature before I forget. Turn that off. Ta-da! We're done. Now we just gotta spend half an hour reassembling the jeezless thing, oh, just so I can pause to go file a hole in the casing. But other than that, we're done. Huzzah. The cable, come on, open. There we go. Those pins up. I believe we can give it the old fold. should be it. I just gotta put it back together. That wouldn't do bad. Probably could have done that in half the time if I were more experienced with these consoles, but even then, um, I went in mostly blind and I don't know, it all looks right. I think we're good. Where's my hoi? Uh, doesn't look like it's in danger of shorting on anything. All of my cables placed like that seem to be out of the way of all the important bits. Uh, ah. Here we go. It doesn't fit with the shielding though. You either gotta remove it entirely, which I'm sure most people are okay with, uh, especially if you're using a clear shell, or we gotta trim it. And I'm just gonna trim it. Not to be perfect. Yeah. Just like that. Fucking 
magnets, man. Ooh, and it doesn't clear over here either. I'm gonna have to remove that too. Okay, that's not working. But that does. Glorious abuse of my CHP 170, yet again. All right, now that clears that, and that clears that. Just need to clear that. What are the chances I break my flush cutters today? Should I just cut the whole thing? That would have made it easier. There we go. Look at that. Can't even tell. Can't even tell it's modified. goes right on there. All right, now what doesn't clear? The casing doesn't clear. Dang, I was doing so good. This whole time I have avoided touching the stupid pad on the CPU. CPU? GPU? I forget which is which. I think the big one's the GPU. Gosh darn it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And that IR window or that IR receiver is, <laughs> uh, I don't think it works through opaque plastics. So I think, well, I'll leave that up to my friend to deal with. <laughs> I think we're good to go to start reassembly though. These three parts need a ship you. Heat sink. I don't recall if these things need a disk drive connected to work. Um, I know that you can install, you can soft mod them and then install some uh, CIOS files that will enable your console to work fine without some of the parts, like um, Bluetooth, for example, or Wi-Fi. And I'm fairly certain the disk drive is part of that. But, now that I know how this stupid thing goes together, I think I can also just assemble it and it will be fine. Still gonna have to cut a hole in the front half of the housing, but we'll get there. Definitely don't need to install all the screws. He says right before he installs all of the screws. Uh-oh, I 
I forgot a part. slack on this thing. But also, I gotta reinstall the Wi-Fi. that Nintendo bothered to mark up this IR shielding. Um, not everything does this, but a lot of things do. And it makes reassembly so much easier. But there's little arrows on the IR shielding. IR shielding? What? What is this? E EMR? I don't know. There's little arrows here, though. You put a small screw where each of the arrows is, and then you don't put a screw where there's an X. It's kind of great. miss any? I don't think so. right there. I was half right. And that is, I believe, yep, that's the little screw hole or screw post that holds the battery tray. How neat is that? forgotten what screws go up top. Maybe it's the black ones still? Yeah, it feels like it. I 
This shielding I thought went over a oh. little. but none of the screw holes line up. Uh, whoops, I'll figure that out later, I guess. Uh, this one goes over, uh -huh. the long screw right here, conveniently marked by a triangle. Same thing with that one. I'm thinking, though, this should have gone underneath. No, never mind. It goes on top. Because there's markings that I can see from the screws. And how about... That's what I'm missing. Forgot about this. Where does this go? Here? Yeah, I think so. It's a weird spot, but all right. There, there. Is there one in this corner? Yep. Order of operations. What order of operations? Excellent. Got all the wires out of the pinch zones. Got that installed. Install this.
have either installed a screw somewhere it doesn't go or lost one. Should be one more for here. Goes there, nothing goes there. Hmm, very peculiar. Yeah, I don't know, that feels like it goes here. And that lines up. But it would have to go underneath the part that I just installed. So we'll pull it out again. It's gotta go there. No, it doesn't. That doesn't. F what? What have I missed? How can that line up with everything else? That was the issue. Ha ha, okay. Very close. of how that almost fits the other way though. Totally fooled me. screw goes here and then right here and then I'm 
just missing that little black one that goes right here. Well, shoot. Okay, I mean, I'm not putting the top on just yet. I'm just fully reassembling this thing otherwise, because I still need to file off the uh, porthole. Wow, look at that. So much easier. And then from here, we can go ahead and test it. cooler won't be running at full efficiency because you know it's not sucking air through the whole console it's going to be sucking air through right here but it should still work otherwise that's not like it ah oh, nuts the thing fell out Well, whatever. I'll I'll reinstall my stupid little screw boss. I'll go find that black screw and I'll probably finish this up off screen, but everything else should be working. Oh, I'm going to have to prop this thing up. HDMI, oh, it doesn't fit, it doesn't reach. This thing does both. I'll plug in my component cable too. Uh, and then I just need a sensor bar because this thing boots to the Wii home screen. So I need a Wiimote. Uh, and let's see if it comes up. Hey! So you to continue. Excellent. Get controller. And gotta lean back. Start the homebrew channel. Uh, I'm noticing this is in widescreen instead of standard, so I'm guessing it's running through the HDMI already. Come in. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, duh. That's why it's not working. <sighs> so I learned something new today. Um, what I learned is that I learned two things. Um, I learned that Wii's are region locked, which I kind of figured they were, but I didn't actually know that. 
Uh, and the second thing, USB. I don't, I don't want USB. Oh, want the disk drive. The second thing I learned is that you can boot straight off the, uh oh. <laughs> My USB doesn't fit with that in there. Ah, wait, no, wait, I hit the wrong button. I learned that you can boot off the disk drive with Nintendo, even if you're using the wrong region. Mm. But also I could play Soul Calibur. I think we want progressive mode if we're doing digital out. Nope. Yeah, I know. Uh, yes, yours. Now, forgive me, I have not played this game in about 15 years, uh, and I have not played fighting games in general in probably a decade. So... We're just gonna go for it. Link? Oh boy! Oh, I don't have the characters unlocked that I want to play with. I don't actually remember who all's in this game. I usually played Soul Calibur 3. That does look good though. That's jump. Stop it! I'm learning the buttons! Yeah, that's about what I expected. And now let me switch back to the other output. Uh, oh, that's not the right device. I need to hit the button on that. And now we should be running through the retro tink. And I'm noticing that now I have sound, so I don't know if I have sound through HDMI. Because uh, it should all be running through the same channel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that. So this, what we're, the footage we're looking at right now, this is through the AV out port. This is composite, no, component signal, the, the five connectors, and it's running through a retro tank, specifically a 5X. Yeah. I don't have the remote. And I accidentally just changed the input. My bad. But I was just making sure that was the retro tink. Uh, and then I could switch back to the digital out. I don't know. It looks pretty darn good. Let's see if we can mess with the settings. L R X Y. I don't have settings. No menu is appearing. Did I put it on the wrong? No, I thought I put it on this one. And I'm using an OEM controller, so it's not that. L, R, X, Y. Ah, I just had to hold it. Ha ha. Do scan lines. Uh, 
Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm confused because it's I'm used to the N64 where when you're in the OSD it stops sending inputs. This is definitely still sending inputs. How do I go Oh, X and Y. That's what it is. Okay, I have no idea what I'm looking at here, so I'm not going to mess with it. All right. All right. ADP mode. Enhanced DBI mode. What does that do? Ah, that gives me sound. <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> ah. There we go. View all modes. Oh. I'm not gonna mess with that. Uh, it's already outputting 720 by 480, 60. I don't know. Oh, that that allows me to adjust. Okay, that that's not giving me an override. That's giving me a um, profile setting. Um. I don't know. There are a lot of settings in here that I'm sure much smarter individuals than I understand exactly what they do. Uh, but I don't know what most of this does and if it will even affect me. Um, mostly I just wanted to see if it worked. Indeed it does. I imagine this is the advanced menu for up store set. Oh, th yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, look at that! That's pretty dope. I wonder how we update the firmware. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. But, uh, there we go. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I'm into it. This game doesn't even look distorted. I wonder if this is just a widescreen game. Normally. No, it's not, but it can be. It's bizarre how it looks no different. Really change it? Yeah. Weird. Oh, see, I wanted to play Cassandra. Did I have Cassandra on there? In this Never mind. I'm good. I'm good where I am. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with any of that. Um, I suppose instead of just getting totally involved in the game, I can talk a little bit about more of the mod. Um, reading through Electron Shepard's troubleshooting page, which I loaded up as soon as the OSD didn't work, um, turns out it was just user error and I needed to hold the button combo a little bit longer. Um, the Wii just needs the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi modules. I didn't need to go through all that effort to put the disk drive in. Though in my defense, I kind of forgot I had a USB on my desk with games on it, 
and a game that I can play. Uh, I was kind of expecting to play the game that's in the disk drive. That's pretty dope. I'm into it. I don't... Alright. En enough of this. I, ne I need to start talking. I'll, I'll keep playing this game if you let me, so... I'm putting it down. Um, can you even turn it off from here? I don't have the faceplate installed, so I can't actually hit the button. Yeah. It's not doing squat. Oh, maybe I can't hit the button. Eject first. Get my game back. Nope. All right. I'm, I'm into it. It works. It does exactly what it says it does on the tin. Um, I think, what do these things run for? Like 80 bucks these days? Yeah. 80 bucks. Which, all things considered, you know, I think it looked about the same as what I was getting through my retro tink. But... I also have an OEM genuine Nintendo component cable that I'm using um, that I bought for $4. But it's, you know, it, that, that doesn't always happen. You know, you can't always find one of these. Um, and then I have it fed into a $250 retro tank. So if this looks as good as the retro tank, that is a compliment because retro tanks are not inexpensive devices. I mean, granted, if you have a whole bunch of consoles that you're thinking about modding, it's probably better to just get a retro tink and then set a cables for them. But if you don't want to do that, I mean, that's your prerogative. And um, my friend who sent this to me, that's his prerogative too. He's, he's only got a handful of consoles and this is one of the only consoles he has. Well, I guess he doesn't have it right now because I have it. Um, but this is one of the only consoles he has that doesn't have a digital output on it. So it makes more sense to him, for him, to just put HDMI in the Jesus thing and then uh, move on. Um, but for me, you know, I've, I've got my own Wii somewhere that does not have a mod. Um, I've got a GameCube, I've got a PS2. I don't know, Dreamcast. A whole bunch of consoles. Doesn't make sense to mod all of them when I could get a retro tink instead and just plug them all into that and it works all the same to me. All right, so this, I'm not gonna finish installing this thing yet, but that's gonna go on there eventually. And then we need to install this bad boy, but first I need to cut for the HDMI, um, and in this case, I am gonna do this off screen. In fact, I'm probably not even going to continue filming. Um, I might get this thing fully reassembled, little screw boss included. I'll go find that screw, and if I can't find that screw, I'll just pull it out of my Wii. Oh, never mind. I just found that screw. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just gotta cut this out. Just gotta file it at this point. I'm going to put a line right on the inside of where I need to cut and then can I slip this over the port? No, of course not. Aha, there we go. Yeah, I can. That doesn't help though. What I need to do is I need to measure how high the port is. So we've got what from the edge exactly three notches. Oh, I'm 
two, three. To that line. And now I just need to go file this out, but um, I'm gonna do the bulk of the work on a um, power tool. And like I said, I've still gotta get that stupid screw boss reinstalled and all that nonsense. So excuse me for a few moments while I go do that. Only two hours into the video, my first time pausing. I'll be back in a moment. Let me stop recordings at the same time. Hmm. Quick interjection, I just removed the four screws for the um, disk drive. I'm reinstalling that screw that I left out, and now I need to reinstall this screw boss for this thing. And I don't actually have to remove that, you just, you just slip it in, just like that. And then... You can screw the uh, battery door back in. How about that? How neat is that? How cool? It just works. But, um, yeah, that's neat. Anyway, I'm gonna go finish reinstalling this and then we'll be back. All right, I brought you back for the uh, very last, very last step. We're still missing, missing my faceplate here. And um, if I were a smarter man, I'd have found that before I started filming. But I'm not, and here we are, but it's okay. I found it. That was, that was all right. I think Wii's, more than anything else, are a little bit tedious to put together, um, but only because I am unfamiliar with the hardware. I think if I did... Oh, I installed two screws too many. I think if I were more familiar with the hardware, I could have done this in half the time. But I also think if I were more familiar with the hardware, I'd I don't know, I probably wouldn't have done this video because I'd have already done it, I don't know. Thought that seemed too quick. In there. Doing all right. Final stretch, just got to install the last four screws and then reinstall the stickers and then we're good to go. How about that? How about that? I don't believe, whoops, sorry. I'm not trying to give everyone motion sickness. Um, I don't believe that these, this mod requires a um, soft modded Wii. Uh, if it does, I didn't do any of the prep for that, but this thing was already soft modded when I got it. Um, but I'm fairly certain it'll work on the stock Wii, no problem, since all we're doing is just intercepting the video and controller signals. Come on. Get in there. I don't want to cross thread you. There we go. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Get my feet reinstalled. Oh, I'm missing some. screw covers, or rather I have extra screw covers. Where did these long ones go? Oh, never mind. Figured it out. Let 
just like that. We're all set. Uh, install both the doors. I don't know what it is with these things that I have never had a Wii where these things work properly. Like, I I don't know. it. The detents are there. It should be working, but it just kind of falls open anyway. So... It's return trip. It's gonna get some of that good good. But otherwise, we're all set to send this bad boy back to its owner. And now my friend can enjoy wonderful. Oh, it's not gonna focus. Oh no. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Um it's alright. I could have done better. Um, but I'm, I'm still very pleased with how that cutout came out. Oh, I really don't want to focus on that, huh? What if I do this? No, it won't let me. It won't let me because I have the other lenses locked out. I'm filming from an iPhone 15 Pro with the, uh, multiple lenses there, and I have the setting enabled to not automatically swap lenses because... When I film like this, it's disorienting when it automatically swaps lenses. And whatever lens I started filming on can't focus this close. So, I'm sorry about that, but you'll have to just take my word for it and look at it from weird angles. Because the Wii simply is longer than the focal distance of my camera. God, that adapter is tight. <laughs> but just goes in like that. And you have your full size HDMI, but I'd recommend just getting a cable that has a mini HDMI on it. Otherwise, there we go. We're all set. It's all done. It's all ready. It's all tested. I gotta reinstall my SD card because this isn't mine. This is my friend's. And uh, I already got my game out, so we're good to go to send it back. Um, I think I've done a fantastic job. I, in fact, I'd, I'd say I've outdone myself, but since I always do a fantastic job, I, I have simply done myself. 